Thanks for checking out this movie review video. This is for the 2021 release Shook, which is a Shudder original and is coming to Shudder on Thursday, February 18th. Now, because I'm releasing this review ahead of time and because it's a 2021 release, this is a no-spoiler review. Now, that said, I do ruin a little bit of kind of like some thematic things that are there, but it doesn't give it away the events of the actual film. And in fact, there was one other theme that's at play in this film that I'm actually not going to talk about at all because I thought about it and I put it down in my notes numerous times different ways and there's really no way that I could do it and not have it signal something that was actually happening in the film events-wise. So I'm not even going to talk about that, but just know there's another theme at play in here in the film and it is pretty overt, so you will know at the end of the film what that is. Um... So, I, but I'm just not saying anything about it now because I don't want to ruin anything about this film, really. So, uh, directed by Jennifer Harrington, who also did the feature-length film Housekeeping. Uh, written by Harrington and a story by Alessia or Alicia Glidewell, who also provided uh, a story and script for Look at Me. And like I said, it's coming on Thursday, February 18th to Shudder. Now, a quick synopsis of this film. So... My synopsis for these films are usually really, really short because I don't want to give too much away. So basically what I'll say is a girl is at home alone. She gets some phone calls and things start happening. That's as much as I want to say. It is interesting. I did enjoy this film. I would recommend watching it. That said, there are some people, there's a particular grouping of horror fans, usually in the older generation of horror fans, who may very well not like this film. And one of the reasons for that being is it's a much younger perspective on the film. There's a use of uh, a good use of technology, being text messaging and also social media, things like that. So if you weren't a fan of Host and the use of technology there and how young and fresh that was, you may not be a fan of this film. So just know that. But I would say at least give it a shot because I had a good time. I enjoyed the film. I thought it was solid. So immediately with this film, you realize it's going to include commentary on current online culture. And there is plenty of that at play here. And that's one of the refreshing things, one of the nice things to see in this film is that's definitely something that's very, very ripe right now to be used in horror films, in my opinion. So I want to see more of that. I feel like this is a good film to kind of lead that charge to do it, along with Host as well, because there's a little bit of that in Host. So I, I enjoy that. Uh, there's a really cool uh, death scene in the very beginning of the film, which I think serves very, very well to kind of grab the audience and uh, get them engaged. So I really particularly like the beginning of this film. Uh, the way in which the person dies is pretty nice. It's not shown like full on. They don't go huge on the practical effects and the kills and stuff like that because it's a low budget film. With most Shutter original films, they are low budget films. So just know that. But I will say that for being a low budget film, they did a pretty good job pulling things off. Uh, they kind of knew their parameters. They got creative with being able to make it realistic as they as realistic as they can and also pulling it off to look good without overextending themselves so yeah so just know that uh the tone and music in the very beginning of this film has a very kind of light and fun feel to it which i really enjoyed now it kind of changes a little bit after the very beginning of it and that's fine uh but i kind of like that you know fun light aspect to it now that said, it doesn't lose the funness as it keeps going because what keeps it kind of fun, and, the, and I didn't see this coming, was that it injects this little aspect of a dark comedy to the film. I don't know if that was intentional or not. I assume it was intentional because of the way that some of the things that happen happen and some of the things that are said are said. Uh, it comes across as intentionally, like, darkly comedic. And I liked that little mixture being added into a, a otherwise kind of serious horror film. So uh, I like that. And I, I feel like that thing is not easy to do. You know, throwing any aspect of comedy into horror is not easy to do. The approach to featuring things like text and social media in this is handled quite well, I do think. 
Uh, one of the problems is a lot of the time when films will use text messaging, they'll show like, show, like just the text messages, like just the screen of the phone. And that it, that's not good. That doesn't work. So it was good to see in this film they're not doing that. You're also seeing the actual actor, the main actor in this, interacting with the text messaging, you know, on her computer and looking at things. So it's not just on the screen. And I like that. I think it's a, the best way to do it because otherwise, I don't know, it just gets boring if it's done where it's just focused on the screen. Now, granted, there are a few shots of that, but it doesn't last long, so that's the good thing. What's interesting is that the style and flow of the film kind of mirrors how people use technology and social media today, meaning that there's kind of like a short attention span to a degree. It's like things are constantly moving from like one thing to another thing. Um, so it, especially early on in the film, it kind of does that. Now, I don't know if that was intentional or not, but if it was, I thought that was really smart because there's a lot of use of text and social media and everything in the beginning of the film. And it's it's got that kind of frantic kind of movement feel to it, but not to a point where it's like it feels detrimental to the film. It just feels like it's mirroring the social media and Internet experience pretty much. So it works, in my opinion. I'm sorry, that, that light. All right. Sorry about that. Well, now it's too. OK, whatever. Apologies for that. Uh, I get a bit of a Scream vibe from this film. It definitely feels like it's inspired by the film Scream, uh, which uh, also, which actually it's good, you know, it's good to be inspired by Scream, but also not take too much from it. Now, setting-wise, I think there's a lot of Scream aspect to it, but also kind of story-wise, there's a little bit, a little bit of Scream to it. So I think they kind of took the right amount of inspiration or I could be totally wrong that there's no inspiration from Scream, but I feel like it definitely plays that way. There's also a little bit, maybe a little bit more than a little bit, inspiration from the Saw films as well. Um, not, well, you'll see what I mean. In, in what way you'll see that I, what I mean. It's not like overt, but yeah. So I spotted those two inspirations and I wanted to call that out. There's a solid intensity uh, that gets mixed with the dark comedy in this film. So there are good, intense, kind of scary moments. Uh, there's a good mystery aspect to it, too, where you're trying to figure out, you know, what is really going on with this. And to that end, there are good twists to this film as well. Twists that I didn't really see coming. Now, granted, I wasn't focusing super hard on trying to figure out what was going to happen before it happened. But it wasn't so clear that I was like, oh, yeah, obviously that's what happens. Uh, good twists. So I, I always enjoy not knowing what's, what's, uh, what's going on until it happens. Uh, I already said that. It does drag a little bit in some places. That's one of my problems with it. It's not a lot, you know, but a little bit here and there. It drags a little too much. It feels like some of the scenes kind of overstay their welcome a little bit. There is a tendency to kind of over-explain a few things. Some of the characters will actually kind of talk too much, where it's kind of like, pull it back a little bit, let some of this be more of subtext, because the audience is smarter than you think. You don't have to tell them uh, or necessarily show them as much as you are. Um, just kind of like draw back a slight bit. But it's not to the point where it's you know, once again, det detrimental to the film. It's just for me personally, it was just like a little bit too much. I would like to, you know, be treated a little bit more intelligently as an audience member. Um, it's just my, one of my things. Uh, the, uh, do, 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 I already saw that. There is something they use in this film that people really don't like. Not only do people not like it, people have a tendency sometimes to get all up in arms about it. So it'll be interesting to see if this is something that gets talked about in respects or in regards to this film. Um, I don't necessarily have as much of a problem with it as some people do. I don't like to see it in films, but it also doesn't bother me to the degree that it bothers a lot of people. But I know that it is divisive. It bothers a lot of people. And like I said, it'll be interesting to see what people say about it or don't say about it. Uh, I have to call this out. Daisy Tudor, the main actress in this film who plays the character of Mia, does a very good job. Overall, good acting in this film. But Daisy Tudor in particular, 
really nice job. This was not an easy role, in my opinion, and she really rose to the occasion. She took that script, and I think that she probably outperformed the script, the script a little bit, which is obviously exactly what you want for being a director, being a writer-director. Um, you want to have that script in front of the person and not only do what you want them to do with the character and deliver the lines that way, but kind of add their own aspect to it, their own pizzazz, their own feel to the character. And I really feel like Daisy did that. So I really wanted to shout her name out because she did a really nice job. I was very impressed. I have a feeling the, oh, yes, I already said this because it's tech based. I have a feeling this older crowd in the horror community is really not going to like this. So just know that if you're hearing from the older horror crowd that this film is not good, I disagree with that. I think it's a generational thing and just recognize that there will be inherent biases because of that. Now, I say that coming from a person who's, I mean, I'm going to be 40 this year, so I'm not young when it comes to the horror crowd. I'm also not on the old end. I guess I'm kind of middle-ish, so I'm kind of straddling the line. Um, there's a real focus on this, uh, in this film on real versus fake in our current world where, uh, internet kind of blurs the lines between real and fake, especially if you kind of live part of, or all of your life online, you know, consider the fact that there are people whose jobs are online, you know, think about streamers, people who do YouTube channels for a living, things like that. It's a very interesting aspect. And this is why I say that, you know, it's something that's relatively new from the last decade or so. So that's why that type of stuff is very much ripe for horror right now. And just, you know, topic in general for film. Uh, and a further point is made in this about what can get missed in the real world when you're so focused on your online world. These are two separate worlds. Sometimes they kind of come together, but a lot of times they are very separate. And it's hard to tell in the you know virtual world what is actually real versus what's going on in the real world and i think there's a good aspect of that playing out in this film there's another theme at play here as well like i said that i will not talk about because it will kind of give away some of the events of the film and i'm not interested in doing that i do want people to watch this film and i do want people to not know too much about it and be able to experience for themselves. So I think this is a good, fun, interesting, independent horror film. I'm glad to see another decent uh, Shudder original film get added. Always glad when that happens. So thumbs up on that one. So out of five stars with half stars in play, it's nothing insane. I'm not going crazy on this. I think it's a very solid three star film in my opinion. So there you go. Check it out now. If you have seen it when you're watching this or if you're going to see it, go ahead and after you've watched it, put in the comments whatever you feel about it. Did you Do you agree with me? Do you not agree with me? Do you, or is it a little of this, a little of that? Let's talk about it. And go ahead, spoilers in the comments, that is fine. We will do that. So um, other than that, I appreciate you checking this out. Do me a quick favor though. Hit that subscribe button. Uh, that's your best way to repay me if you like this video or any video I've ever done because I don't get paid to do this. I'm just doing this for a good time, trying to grow this nerdy horror community right here and just talk about horror films, you know? Give people some information on it. But um, once again, like I said, I do appreciate you taking your time to check this out. And until next time, keep it brutal.